Alright, I like where my damage output's going, and my strength is lagging behind my body slightly. Uh, I can upgrade it with the six, so I think I'm gonna go for that, actually. Bam! So that's six karma spent for our six strength, which increases uh, my chance to hit with melee weapons and the damage value of melee attacks and how far grenades can be thrown. All seem pretty useful to me in this particular character build. Alright, so last episode, we hacked our... Well, we, we uh, talked to a crazy... So we got sent on a mission by Kindly Chang, which led us to here. We're delivering a message. I'm trying not to kill anyone on the way in, because it's just clean, and then killing might piss off Chang, as, as well as risk our lives. Talked to a crazy spirit. Spirit gave us a code to get through this door, and that's how you get into the lair that we're going into. But before I do that, I just want to take a look-see around, because this is still a pretty new area. That's the door that's broken, I believe. Let's go on a sp sprint a little faster, come on. There's a few areas down here I haven't checked out yet, and I might as well find out what I'm missing. The yellow lo lotus enforcer glares at you. You can see the outline of the old man's cred stick in his vest pocket. He flexes and his muscles bulge. What do you want? Step away, asshole, right now. Yeah, I'm leaving. Want so I wandered in on the on the guy that beat up that old man last episode. Not my business right now, though, is how I'm gonna approach this. I'm not gonna do anything that will step. I'm, I'm gonna avoid doing anything that'll step on Kindly Cheng's toes for now, until I'm confident that our identity problem has been resolved. The this old rusted water valve might be able to close off the flow of water that's pouring out of the broken pipe. Well, what a coincidence. I'm really strong, so I'm gonna wrench the fucking shutoff controls right off there. The flow of water ceases. Less clean water will run off into the streets now. Yay! We finished all the feng shui that you can handle, brother. You know what? I'm gonna take a quick trip back upstairs and talk to uh, our friend about that before I go into the next area. We'll just skip ahead. Hey, bloodied woman. How you doing? The young woman startles as you approach, fumbling for something in her pocket. When she recognizes you, she relaxes. Is it done? It's done. Thank you. Thank you so much. The young woman sighs with relief. She opens the flap of her satchel, reaches inside, and produces a plastic sheath. It's not magically active, so I can't see the flow of the key in the area, but I've got test strips, little sheets of paper embedded with key-sensitive bacteria. It's a close relative to FAB, but it doesn't see much, uh, see much use outside of Hong Kong. She pulls a strip out of the sheaf and holds it in the air. Within seconds, the ink turns black. She lets out a dejected sigh, her eyes shifting from the strip to her watch the strip again. She looks utterly defeated. Damn it! I've been making adjustments for weeks now, trying to get the key to circulate better, and nothing seems to work. If anything, this one went bad even faster than the control ships I took when I got home, when I got here. Any idea why? No. It should work. I followed the text, done everything right. The key here is rancid. That's obvious. But I swear, it's not even worse, th it's even worse than it should be. No wonder this place is so disgusting. I get what you mean. The student coughs and rests her head in her hands. That's it. I'm, I'm getting out of here in a little while. Gotta tell my advisor about this. Thanks for your help. Hope you don't stay long. I, I sure as hell won't. Well, I did a thing. I tried to do a thing. It was a gesture to try to fix this place up. Did not work out. Alright. We'll just try to get that that uh, notification to... Strangler Bow. Without tr and try not to get anyone killed along the way. On our side or theirs. Alright. We're back at the place where we fought the two hellhounds after unlocking the door from the code we got from the spirit last episode. Now it's time to try to meet with Strangler Bow without getting everyone killed. Let's see how possible that is. Also, let's do a quick save point before we do that, because that's how you play these games, silly. I'm sure it'll work out great. Everyone's been friendly to me so far in this game. Oh, the game saved, of course. Alright. 
Let's open up. How screwed am I immediately? Not immediately bad. Is this one of those things where I have to try to find the right way in and out? Oh, is that the way to the place? That, there's an icon over there. What's in that door? I know this one seems to be the right way to go. Let's go straight to it if we can, because if we wander around, we might alert someone we don't want to. The door has been sealed with a factory fresh mag lock. A high sec keypad has been set into the frame. Enter a key code. 5465. Oops. 5645? Nope. I wasn't sure if I got the code wrong, but nope, I don't have the code to this door, and it's probably the door I need. Alright, so I guess we will be looking around then. Let's hope hopefully we don't get caught around here. The handyman. Yeah. <laughs> At least we can just run around and take stuff. Oh, there's this code in the next room over. Well, that was easy. Strangler's not very good with his security. Oh, shit. I hit escape. That doesn't work, apparently. Uh, I have to check what the code is, dummy. Uh, 6378. Alright. 6378, 6378, 6378. Well, that was easy. The door unlocks. Oh, Strangler. Are you all alone in here? Are you Are you already dead? Nope. You have a teddy bear? Aww. Do you not want us to see that? We got a message for you, you son of a bitch. A large man in his 50s stands waiting. His heavily tattooed arms held in a fighter stance. His bone structure is heavy. Corded muscle stands out on his arms and chest. In his youth, he must have been enormous. He doesn't talk so much as emit a low rumble. I don't know how you got in here, but you've got my attention. Good. I have a message from Kindly Cheng. A message from Cheng? I can't wait to hear you mangle it. He chuckles to himself. You speak Cantonese so well, but before I hear it... I have a little message for her, too. You tell Kindly Chang that her operatives are done in the walled city. Strangler Bao has given himself a promotion. And tell her that if she sends any more errand boys to visit him with another message, Strangler Bao is going to send him back in a box. You think you can tell her that, Aaron boy? Should I write it down for you in English? Just slot the stick. Listen to the message. I'll be done. I'll be and I'll be gone. Okay. Hold out the data stick. I don't get to hear you butcher the message. I'm sad. He grabs the plastic drive from your hand, slots it into the the uh, trid player. I don't know what the message says. I haven't listened to it. Kindly Cheng stands erect, speaks directly into the camera. Mr. B Mr. Bao, as everyone knows, you are a man of swift action. I respect that, and because of that respect, I will get right to the point. I know where your money is coming from. I know that you have friends working for straw sandals like myself. They have been siphoning funds from their organizations. I know that the noodle shop that you launder the money through... I, oh, I, I know about the noodle shop that you launder the money through. I have tasted their broth and found it wanting. The old woman becomes uh, flinty hard. You have been stealing from the Yellow Lotus, glorifying yourself with revenue that we have earned. And I have files to prove it. Bao's eyes widen as he... As Files begin to flit across the screen. Receipts, bank reports, personal communications between him and his men. Kindly Chang continues speaking, smooth and casual. Now, in light of our recent conflict, you might be wondering why I am keeping this information to myself. Why I haven't exposed you so you can be dragged from your lotus den by the balls and slowly roasted on a rotisserie spit. In truth, I respect your ambition. You have a lot to learn about candor and loyalty, but I believe that you still have value. I am still willing to work with you. However, in order to that, for that to happen, we need to come to an understanding 
about the nature of our partnership. Kindly Cheng steps forward, fills the screen. I own you, Bao. You and all your men. You are my fucking playthings. Dolls to, swit, to twist and pose as I see fit. I am in this position because I am a far better at this than you are. And it's time that you learned it. Accept what I am telling you, and we can get back to business. Prosper together. But if you continue your little rebellion, I will mail tiny pieces of your children. I will, <laughs> I will mail you tiny pieces of your children and take their picture as they open the package. She produces one of her, uh, her thin black cigars, lights it, holds the smoke a long time. You have 24 hours to return to the fold. <laughs> God damn it. If you aren't licking my heels by then, the information will be released and you will become food for fish. Your choice, Bao. 24 hours. The message winks out. Strangler Bao turns away from the screen slowly. His skin is ashen, which seemed to be already true from the portrait that I saw him in the first place in, but I'll just take it. I'll take the description at its face. Get out. He pauses, casts his eyes on the floor, and tell Miss Chang to expect me at Swift Winds tomorrow. He stands up straight. Tomorrow morning. I'll let her know. Go. Just, just go. Hey, no one died, sweet. And the whole res thing's resolved, and they're gonna get mad at each other. They're gonna be so unhappy. I'm gonna take a look around now. Now that I made this guy my bitch, and he's all dejected and shit, I'm just gonna see what kind of stuff. Ooh, Siamese vending. What is that? Oh, SimSense vending machine. This SimSense machine has been left unlocked for the restocking. There's a packaging. There's a package data chip and still in the tray. Mine. Yay. Can Stealing from the triad, this is gonna end well. I make good decisions, I'm gonna get hung by my intestines. Is that like my single point of temptation? Like, here's the one thing you could potentially steal in this entire place. Now you've doomed yourself just for doing that one thing. Ah, but she would like, isn't she gonna like my ambition? Isn't that how this works? <laughs> What's this one? Ooh, even more money. All right, and this will take me to the roof? The rooftops? Oh, it'll go out the front door. Uh, they, they don't necessarily have the message to not attack me, so I'm gonna go back with the way I came. That just seems like a better plan. Alright. So, I'll show you guys if anything happens, like a surprise, like, ambush! But, for the most part, I think I'm just gonna run back. Oh, wait, what? Is that spot shiny? Is that like a fast travel look? It is. A fa it says, return to Haley. Alright. Never mind. I don't need to. Wu holds up his hand for everyone to stop, turns to the two of you, and hooks his thumbs in his belt. Well, that was a thing. Never thought I'd be shuttling messages between criminals and the Hong Kong Syndicate. I can't imagine Raymond would have wanted... What Raymond would have wanted in the Walled City. This place just feels wrong. It must have been important. He flew all the way here, hired runners for an escort. But why? This place makes you feel like your life has no value. Like there's no point to anything. He, he sighs and looks at your, your companion. Great life you have here. Oh, that's just rude, Duncan. Gobbit ignores the barb, scratches her head. I can't believe it. We actually delivered the old lady's message without anyone dying. I've had enough of triads. Let's get out of this pit. I am with you, Gunshow. I don't need to see this place ever again. Gunshow, seriously. Wu's goggles pan down, come to rest on Gobbit. That's not gonna stick, is it? Let's go. Let's return to Haley. And yes, it is going to stick. Your name is Gunshow for the rest of this goddamn playthrough. I've already forgotten your name and you're my brother. You can't stop me, you can't tell me what to do. Haley, it's hard to shake off the walled city. Its gravity clings to you as if wretchedness itself had grown tentacles. The sounds of suffering subside, but their echoes still thrum your insides. Gobbit walks slowly, head down and both hands on her stomach, whispering a conversation to someone or something that only she can see. Her rats are silent and remain hidden in her clothing. 
Wu pauses a moment and breathes a sigh of relief when you finally reach the streets, but returning to Heiwi isn't like coming home. Suspicious looks and closed mouths ac accent unsmiling faces that billboard a universal message. You don't belong here. Time to report back to Kylie Chang and, and inform her that the message has been delivered. Get this business over with. Get your sin burned. Get on the next step. Whatever that is. You leave the city of darkness behind. Head to Mahjong Parlor with a date with a crime lord. This will end well. Just a date with a crime lord. What could go wrong with that whole approach? We're just leaving a place called the City of Darkness. To, to meet its leader's boss. Oh my god, we gained six karma. I believe that's enough. Yeah, that's enough for, for me to increase my body stat. Yes, I will. I want... Let's have too, let's have too many hit points. That sounds like a good strategy. Bam! How does 70 hit points sound, Mr. Handyman? I, I think it's good to front load our hit point increases and strength increases here because I assume it'll get harder to level over time, or, or maybe not. Actually, the way that they have increased costs. Oh, that's interesting. Most games make you level slower and slower, as in like they give you the the uh, thing that they, they usually give you less and less levels over time, like increase the experience cost over and more. This one's interesting because I, I wouldn't be surprised if we keep getting karma at like a constant rate and it's just that each individual thing you can increase just keeps getting more expensive and that's how they handle it. Like Fable, I guess, is the comparable one. Enter the, the motor station. What's this over here? An X? A large X formed by peeling duct tape. Weird. Alright. Still going off the part where they told me not to maximum law. <laughs> they did tell me not to lock to talk to people around here, but maybe I should later. Let's focus for now on. Yeah, I think that the more that I see this place as being potentially the hub world, maybe I won't want to talk to all these people. And maybe even this episode. But let's deal with the the fallout of what I've done first. Hopefully, she'll be pleased with me, right? Because I did all the things she asked me to do. Please. <laughs> Please be pleased. I clicked past her, didn't I? Kindly Cheng watches you closely as you walk across the Mahjong parlor. As you approach, her lieutenant leans in and brings her mouth close to the triad boss's ear. Cheng smiles and nods, her eyes never leaving you. There's a twinkle in, in the straw sandal's eye. I've heard from Bao. He got my message very clearly, and I understand that there were no casualties created during your little delivery run. I am pleased and surprised. Gobba did a great job of guiding us. It's true, we needed her to get in there, and now I think it's been enough time that I can maybe compliment her. Oh, right, grin. Did she? Good to know. My message was delivered, and Strangler Bow is back in the fold, earning for me. As far as I'm concerned, our transaction is complete. It really, was that easy? By the way, I just got 750 yen, that's crazy. While you were gone, I set the wheels in motion to wipe your identities. She pulls out the PDA, stabs a button with a lacquered fingernail. The order has been sent. Congratulations, you are now sinless, shadow people. Wu exhales heavily. His eyes remain focused straight ahead, but his shoulders sag. Uh, I didn't like the way my life was going anyway. Wu pulls himself at, uh, up to his full height. Yeah, well, I had something go in Seattle, going in Seattle Grotto. I had my license. I had my freelance. Found a storefront in Bellevue where Carter and I were going to set up shop. Now it's all blown to hell. He clenches his fist. Someone's going to pay for that. Pay for Carter. Whoever gave the kill order on Carter also forced us to give up our identities, and took Raymond. Wu said his jaw firm. That's all I can think about. Finding who did this. Finding Ray. Kindly Cheng holds up a hand. While I was working to get your sins burned, I also had my network lurk into, look into Raymond Black's disappearance. She rests her PDA on the mahjong table facing you. The triad boss's tongue slips from her mouth as she looks over the top, hunting for the right button on its upside-down interface. She finds it and looks up at you again. 
I have news to share with you, my darlings. The kind you won't like. Raymond Black is dead. She taps the button and a record a recorded newscast appears on the stream. Raymond's photograph appears on the screen behind a reporter standing on the docks in Victoria Harbor. It's a picture you've seen before. A professional portrait taken for a press release about a youth center he was opening in the Redmond Barrens. Under Redmond's photo are the words, Seattle man killed. Another shooting involving the police department. A Seattle community organizer and industrial engineer was apparently shot and killed while, re while resisting arrest in Victoria Harbor last night. HKPF police report that the UCAS man Raymond Black was behaving erratically and would not respond to police orders to surrender. No additional information regarding Black or why he was traveling to Hong Kong are available. Police have stated that due to the shooting's proximity to last night's shootout with the White Star, the investigation must remain confidential, and no other details are being revealed at this time. Kindly Cheng taps the button again and the video closes. Wu puts his hand to his face. This just keeps getting worse. You were right, Auntie. That was news I did not like. Raymond's dead. Wu puts his hand over his mouth, trying to process the information. He sways, and for a moment, it looks as if he's going to pass out. Isabel reaches out to touch Wu, thinks better of it, and pulls back her hand. Sorry for your loss. I never had a father, so I don't know what it's like to lose one, but sorry. Raymond dies the same night we're ambushed. That's no coincidence. No fucking way. Kindly taps the video closed. She hunts around the keypad and selects another, another button. I'm afraid that's not all, darlings. This is security footage from Victoria Harbor from last night. You'll find it contains a contradiction. The PDA shows silent, grainy footage of Raymond sitting in a tea shop flanked by two guards. He looks... He's looking down at something in his hand, completely distracted. The footage continues, and the camera displays several black-clad figures entering its field of view from different angles. Guns ready, a tall, sharply dressed man in a suit walks gr briskly towards Raymond, flanked by two more. Raymond stands to face him, and the camera gets a clear view of the suit's face, white plastic. His guards turn to draw weapons, and the muzzle flashes erupt from all sides. One of Raymond's guards goes down, and his submachine gu gun fires wildly, hitting the camera. Wu puts his hands on the table and leans in. Those weren't cops, and Raymond wasn't resisting arrest. What's with that guy's face? Gobbit reaches up to stroke the rat perched on her shoulder. Is that a mask? It doesn't look like a mask. It looks like some sort of semi-rigid plastic implant. Real craftsmanship. She pushes out her lower lip in appreciation. Quite the fashion accessory. It's also the kind of fashion accessory that stands out in a crowd. This guy's either a fool or an arrogant son of a bitch. He sets his jaw firm. Either way, I'm gonna find him. Kindly Cheng watches Wu intently. I believe you. Wu stands back and turns to you. What now? I can say we stay in the shadows, we don't, we're dead to. Uh, we find the plastic faced man and drag him somewhere private, make him dig his own hole, then we'll fill it. <laughs> uh, we send, we find out who plastic man is, then we get some answers. Ah. Uh, the type of character I'm playing in the middle one probably makes the most sense, honestly. Uh, we find the plastic faced man, drag him somewhere private, make him dig his own hole, then we fill it. Kindly Cheng's uh, eyes sparkle. I like the way you think. That is exactly what I would do. But how? I'm afraid there are some facts you are going to have to face. She puts on a grave face. You are alone in this country. No network. No money. No identity. I can protect you from the police. But how? Would you go about discovering what happened to Raymond without me? How would you survive? Kindly wipes her hand across a stack of files, spreading the ivory uh, tiles, spreading the ivory 
colored pieces across the table. You've had a very long night, my sweets. Very long. I bet she's planning on a way of getting us in more in debt to her. Keep doing jobs for me and I'll help you find the masked man. And frankly, you all look like shit. Rest now. I, I promise you safety in my town for the night. We'll talk about the plastic-faced man tomorrow. Kindly gestures at, the, at Goblet and Isabel. Ladies, go find our new friends a place to bed down in that rat's nest squat boat you call home. We'll all talk after you've slept. Figure out our next steps together. Yes, auntie. Yes, auntie. <laughs> I could actually just ask about the exact thing that she said. You know what? I've done a job for her. Maybe I can finally ask a question. Can I ask you a question, auntie? No questions, my darling. Sleep. I'll figure out what to do with you in the morning. That's not threatening at all. Let's go, Grotto. I'm beat to hell. Alright, fine. We'll go sleep. It's a pretty it's a pretty easy quest objective. Unless it's a horror game or something, then it's pretty hard to go to sleep. Should I meet some people around town though before we do that, maybe? I'm curious about some of these randoms that I've been seeing. What's the guy on this boat, for example? Who are you? Maximum law! Except you can't be that much into law- that much- that much of a lawman, can you? If you're in the middle of this place. Bins of electronics crowd every dry patch of deck space on this rusty old boat. A young man wearing bulky virtual reality goggles glances your way for a moment, then turns away in disdain. Oh. So he's, he's, is that like his dumb video game tag basically is the maximum law? Who are you? He doesn't even look at you. Shop's closed, get lost. All right, well, maybe some other day, or maybe if I, or maybe you have to play, I don't know if you, maybe you have to play as a character who uh, actually has tech skill, or maybe you can only talk, deal with that person, the intercom. Maybe you can only deal with that person if you, uh, don't mess with the law. Oh, it says it right there on the ship. Law's Techno Palace. Oh, that, I read that before. I remember that little bit. Maybe maybe he'll just become available later. Who the hell is Frederick Kafai? Besides a, a brother troll. Oh, wow. That face. All right. Frederick Kafai. That's close enough, friend. The club is members and invites only. I suggest you get you move along. Come on, man. My friends are already inside. Can't I just look around for a second? No. Sweet. All right, maybe I should go to sleep. <laughs> this town does. This town's not very talkative so far. Maybe I just got to be be less new about here, as was suggested before. All right, let's talk. To, let's check out their little shit den. Ooh, bolt hole. The original name has been sloppily painted over with black paint. Oopsie. Newer but somewhat weathered characters have been painted in bold brush strokes that and read bolt hole. So they've adopted someone else's someone else's boat. Oh, this thing. This this ship this era, this whole area goes on for a while. Uh what did it say? Spider Shen. The monk proprietor of this stall regards you coldly as you approach. Before you can even utter a word, you're interrupted. Nothing for sale here. Not for you. You want to buy something? Go get- you get kindly Cheng to vouch for you first. Until then, screw off. I don't think anyone wants to deal with me because I apparently haven't been vouched for yet. Maybe that's something that happens after you sleep the first night. That would make sense. And this is looping back to where we were earlier. So yeah, let's get to that ship. Figure I might as well see what happens when I talk to people. Turns out they're not super psyched to see me. Yet. They'll learn my name though, those sons of bitches. They're gonna fear the handyman. You two can bunk here for a while. She nods with her uh, with her nose towards the hatch. The head's over there and you can take care of your necessities. I may look commu it may look communal, but try to knock before you enter. Seriously. I know the drill. Who turns to you? Stinks of fish, just like the place we squatted at on Leary Avenue back when we were kids. The one with the Aztlan family and her, their dog. You hated that dog. 
He kept digging into my food stash. No matter where I hid it, he'd find it and scarf down a week's worth of grub. He wipes his nose with a, gro a gloved hand. Still, it was sad what happened to him and the family. No one should go out that way. He stretches and his spine pops like a handful of firecrackers. I think I've been up for something like 36 hours straight. He drops his arms, and this has been one shit stain of a day. Time to end it. The orc turns to you, raises an eyebrow. Anything you need before I leave you to it? How'd you get your hands? How'd you get your hands on this place? How do people like uh, like us get our hands on anything? We found it. You found it empty. He sweeps his eyes across the cabin. The doubt is plain on his face. Somebody abandoned a prime piece of real estate like this. She shrugs. Close enough. It was full of BTL junkies when we came across it. They were completely wigged out on some multiplayer cyber game. I'm not sure they ever chipped out of it. They were completely emaciated, stewing in piles of their own shit. Their eyes had sunk into their skulls. Pretty gruesome stuff. They racked up a killer score, though. True. They had the moves. Should have hung an IV while they were playing, though. Turns out, nutrition is important. So what happens? Did they, did they die? She shrugs. Nightjar ran him out. Not sure what happened to them after that. Anyway, it's ours now. Auntie Chang says so. All but the engine room, you mean. Right, everything but that. Auntie rented it out from under us. That must have pissed you off. She shrugs. Whatever, we weren't using it. As long as our downstairs neighbor keeps to himself, he can have the lower level, especially if he keeps Auntie Cheng happy. Let's see... Is it just you and Isabel living here? Yeah. Gobbit's mouth screws up a bit. Now that Nightjar and Gunshot are, gu Gutshot are gone, it's, it's just us. The squeal of metal grinding on metal rips through the boat. It sounds like it's coming from the level below. And the creepy Russian guy renting the engine room downstairs. Nothing to worry about. He mostly keeps to himself. She checks the PDA. He'll stop soon. He's usually, he's usually quiet by now. Is there a place for my stuff? You can check the locker over there. You can stash your stuff in it. No one will touch your things in there. And it's a lot bigger than it looks. I'm gonna grab some snack time too. Good. You look like you could use it. We'll go see kindly in the morning. Figure out our next motive. Alright, sleeping time. I think it said sack time, not snack time. I may have misread that. Is this our sleeping room? There's our stash. Which I don't immediately have stuff to put in yet. Did something get highlighted? Oh, that was me highlighting myself. I'm like, what did I just highlight? I should probably talk to Duncan about all the stuff that's been going on. Seems reasonable to me. Hey, Grotto. I got some things I gotta take care of here. Let's talk later. Or not. Sweet. What if I go upstairs? Anyone gonna get mad at me? Howdy, y'all. You wanna you wanna get to know each other, Isabel? Come back later, handyman. I'm busy. I should. I wonder if I can edit my. I wonder if I can go into my my save file and edit the text line or something to just change my nickname to just handyman without breaking anything. Because, yeah, the part where I say the works for, like, stuff like this. Of, like, seeing my character screen, like, the handyman. But, uh, people say the in sentences, which I didn't really consider at the time. I'll, I'll just try to not to read it. Hey, Seattle. I'm not really in the mood to hang out right now. Heavy stuff going on, you know? It'll be fine, but for the time being, I'd rather be alone. We'll talk later, though. Fine. I guess I'll go be lonely. No big deal, just probably saved everyone's lives or something. Being awesome. <laughs> so there's no access to the bottom floor from here. There must be somewhere else altogether. Also, not supposed to go down there, but it didn't stop me from seeing if it was there or not. Alright. Let's sleep.
The dream is suffocating. The shifting tunnel of glass and steel. The towering silhouette of dark maje of majesty. The shadowy doorway. And the teeth. Oh, we're having the same dream as Ray. They snap at your heels as you draw your as they as you claw your way back to consciousness. You open your eyes to Duncan looming over you. He shakes your shoulder roughly. Grotto. Come on, Grotto, wake up. We gotta go we gotta go talk to Kindly. The other's already left. What's your problem, Duncan? He lets go of your shoulder and cocks a thumb at the hatch. We got to go. I've been trying to wake you for a while now. You were thrashing around in your sleep. Glad you glad you did. I was having a hell of a nightmare. He reaches up and rubs the back of his neck. Yeah, I didn't sleep well either. Had a bad dream last night, too. What about? He shrugs. I never remember my dreams all that well. It was probably motion sickness. Not used to sleeping on the boat. I woke up a little while ago and hit and hit the head. Then I came back and woke you. You doing okay? I'll survive. His fingers uh, hit a knot. He winces. But man, nothing's gone right since we stepped foot in this country. I'll tell you something though, and this is after a full night's sleep. I don't believe Ray is dead. I hope you're right, but I gotta say, it doesn't look good. I'm right. Think about it. That statement about the cops on the newscast could be fake. Ours was. And that surveillance footage? We never saw Raymond get shot. The camera was hit by stray gunfire. His passion is intense, but contained. Focused. Raymond's alive, Grotto. I know it. You make a good case, Officer Wu. He smiles. His teeth are white and straight and perfect. Should have been a detective instead of a headbuster, right? His smile fades. God, I feel like I'm 12 years old again, squatting on a stinking trawler. My partner's gone. Raymond's gone. Hell, I'm gone. I don't even know my name anymore. I don't even have a name anymore. And now I can't even go to sleep and hide from it all without having a nightmare. His jaw tightens and his teeth grind so loud you can hear it. What else is going to be taken away from me? Nothing. It's time for us to turn the tables, do something, to do some taking of our own. Wu's head cocks like it, he's got the scent of something. I've heard that tone before. What are you talking about, Grotto? What tone? I don't have a tone. Please. I've known you since you were 12. You think I don't know your let's make some trouble tone? He takes a step forward. What are you thinking? That kindly Cheng wants to be our fixer. It makes sense. He crosses his arms, considering... Shadow Runners. Oh man, I have to think about this. He shakes his head slowly, lets out a groan. This isn't the way it's supposed to be. I'm supposed to be a cop. You get to keep your gun. That's something. Don't mess with me, man. He checks his watch. Goblin and Isabel left a while ago. We should get going too. See what the triad lady has to say. I'm just trying to lighten the mood a little bit, you know, in the face of horrible tragedy and the death of our lives and the death of maybe of our father and the deaths of us soon. Maybe tomorrow, maybe today, maybe next week. Who knows? Things have looked better for us. Do you think we've been vouched for yet? Eh, I'll just check in at the parlor first. No reason to delay things. Oh, that's... Huh. Look who's all tied up. Oh, that's uh, that's probably Mr. Strangler Bao. Kindly's place reeks of stale cigar smoke and fresh urine. The clicking of mahjong tiles is strangely absent. In its place, a low murmur of laughter and an air of eager anticipation. All eyes are focused on the groaning figure kneeling bloody and bound at the feet of Kindly Cheng. She beckons him with a finger, and he struggles towards her, the loud rustling of the plastic tarp crackling under his knees as he moves. His pants are wet with fear, and an ast... an ast... astylene? Astylene? 
An acetylene torch lies at the table of Cheng's right hand. I think he's about to get punished. Kylie Cheng ignores the scene. She behaves as if all is right in the world. How did you sleep, my little ones? Like a baby, auntie. It's still I'm still in the afterglow of our tour of the walled city. The triad boss's eyes turn to half moons of amusement. Afterglow? Really? She nods her head back towards the pillar of meat standing behind her. Then you should be delighted to say to hello to our old friend Strangler Bao. He's here because of you. How very pleasant to see you again, Mr. Bao. Bao inclines his head one quarter of an inch. Well then, now the niceties are over, let's get to the nasties. She indicates the, the kneeling man with an incline of her nose. Shitbird here is a plain clothes cl cop. He snuck into the area last night while you were sleeping, hoping to find you and kill you before his competition got to you first. My men found him outside the trowler you were sleeping on. They saw to it that the rest was undisturbed and that your location remained a mystery. She nods her head back towards the pillar of meat standing behind her. You can thank Mr. Bao for that. Nod at Strangler Bao. Bao inclines his head one quarter of an inch. It's consistent, probably because he looks all robot-y. She addresses the bloody man on his knees. Now, shitbird, tell me, tell my friends here what you told me. I, I don't know anything, I swear. We just got the orders last night. He pushed his head towards you. He pushes his head towards you and Wu from the floor, struggling to keep his balance. Somebody high up wants these two dead. The whole department is on it, in on it. I don't know anything about else. Someone from high up. The old woman lifts her foot, taps his chin with the, sh the toe of her shoe. How high? The cop looks up at her, looks around the room filled with triad soldiers. One of them opens his coat and shows the cop something inside. He closes it slowly and winks. The cop drops his head to his chest. All the way, all the way up. It's someone on the council. Someone on the executive council wants these two dead. The Cheng spits on him with a sneer. Fuck your ancestors to the 18th generation. Give me the truth. The cop wears the spittle. He never lifts his head. It's the truth, madam, I swear it. Whoever it was that labeled them as terrorists, we're going to terminate the, with extreme prejudice. Kindly Cheng shuffles closer to the kneeling cop, reaches down and strokes his head with her hand. Then she slowly digs her fingers into scalp. She pulls back hard until his chin points high. The triad boss leans in close and searches his eyes with her own. That's all she that's all he's got. She lets go of his head and smooths his buzzed cut hair with her hand. For whatever reason, last night, someone on the executive council of the Free Enterprise Zone ordered the Hong Kong police force to kill two nobodies from Seattle. I find that fascinating, don't you? I call that some messed up shit. Seattle isn't like Hong Kong. There, the megacores control the, co the government. Here, the cores are... There, they are the government. The executive council is chosen by the corporate board of governors. They're basically the legislative and executive branches of the Hong Kong government in one tiny package. Eight people called all the shots. Neat and efficient. Kylie Cheng steps back from the cop and lights one of her thin black cigars. For the wage slaves and the civilian sheep, the corporations are a pantheon of gods who wield absolute power. She looks around the room. But not for us. The triad woman takes a long pull from her cigar and taps her ash on the kneeling cop's head. Who else knows about my guest's visit to Haley, shitbird? No one met him. I hadn't called in yet. I wanted to kill for myself. No one knows they're here, I swear it. She turns to her enforcer. Mr. Bao? I mean, this obviously ends poorly for him. Mr. Bao fiddles with the PDA with his meaty hands. He's telling the truth. No outgoing calls on his PDA. Very good, Mr. Bao. Thank you. 
Thank you for your honesty, she nods at the cop. In one smooth motion, Strangler Bow produces a silenced pistol, fires it once in the policeman's head, and replaces it in his jacket. His face never changes expression. Looks like the triads can be just as efficient. Kang Cheng takes a drag of her cigar. Hmm, yes, my darling. She places her cigar on her shot glass, picks up some mahjong tiles, and begins playing them with them absently. It is clear our friend Raymond Black was up to something involving the walled city. Something having to do with prosperity. And this executive council member wanted Raymond dead for it. She stacks her tiles one by one, click clack. And now they want you dead for it too. Click. The plastic faced man may show up on your door one day too. She knocks the pile over and as it clatters on the table loudly. I have a proposal for you, my sweets. A smile lights up her dead black eyes. Work for me. With Nightjar and Gutshot dead, I find myself with two job openings. Fill them. I have need of deniable assets here. Players, unaffiliated with the triads, who can take care of some of the more unsavory business needs about town. You've proven yourself resourceful, and you have no existing connections here. That could be a po that can be a positive in this line of work. See, Duncan, I knew it. She wants us to become Shadowrunners. Yep, you saw that coming. In exchange, I will keep you safe from pests like this one. She nods at the body on the floor. The pool of blood on the plastic wrap continues to widen. You'll have safe harbor here in my town, and a steady source of income. She picks up a handful of tiles again. And while you dip your toe into the waters of corporate espionage, organized crime, and clandestine mercenary actions, I will employ my network of the plastic-faced man, I mean, to find the plastic-faced man and gather information about Raymond Black. Where he's been, who he's talked to, who stood to gain from his death, and this prosperity, and what this prosperity could be. You're putting in a lot of effort to help a pair of foreigners. Not foreigners, my sweet, valued business associates. I need to learn who killed one of my clients and then ordered the cops to execute my team of shadow runners. Her voice drops and she becomes deadly serious. This is brazen disregard of my power. Face dis dictates every face dictates it must be confronted or I stand to lose everything. We need to find out who killed Raymond and why. And we shall, my sweet. She leans in. Work with me. Allow me to help you make money. Let my network allow uh, work for you and help you find out what you've gotten yourselves into. Without my help, you won't last a day out here. You are completely out of your depth, I'm afraid. You need a partner. Kindly Cheng will be your partner. Wu's hands go to his hips, he drops his head, and shakes it a little, amused. It was just like you said, Grodo. Shadowrunners. Glad I had some time to think about it. Process. He grips the back of his neck, squeezes hard, rips his hand away. Ah, fuck it. I'm not a cop anymore, that guy's dead. He nods, the decision's made. I'm in. What about you? I don't think I can say no, can I? <laughs> I'm in two, I don't have anything back home anyway, there's a good money in the shadows, it's about time I cashed in. I'm in until I can clear my name and get the hell out of Hong Kong. I'm gonna find out who killed Raymond, someone's gotta pay, and I think Ray's still alive too, let's run the shadows and figure out what happened to him. Um, yeah, let's see that, let's just, let's, pl let's keep playing with the idea that maybe he's still around. I think Ray's still alive too. Let's run the shadows and figure out what happened to him. Raymond is alive, I'm sure of it. So I'll, I'll run the shadows as long as Auntie Cheng keeps her head into the bargain and helps us figure out what really happened to him. 
Then I'm gonna find my father. Then it's done. Haoi is now open to you. She gestures at her lieutenant who raises a finger to her ear and whispers in into her sleeve. First order of business, the handyman here has already chosen a street name. She turns her attention to Wu, but Duncan Wu doesn't exist anymore. You need one too. Wu sighs. Yeah, okay, I'll think of something. The gun show, the gun show, the gun show, the gun show. Gobbit rubs her cheek against her rats, a glint in her eye. I think we've already got you covered, gun show. She, tur she turns to Isabel. Fits, doesn't it? Indeed. I knew that was gonna stick. It has stuck. Gobbit, Isabel, we'll handle this the same way we did with all your previous work. She didn't say Nightjar. All the jobs I line up for you will be sent to your computer on the squat boat. She's pointing at you. My computer? I'm not the leader type. You are now by process of elimination. She points to the little decker. Isabel is the leader type. You got that right. She moves her finger to the orc girl. As for Gobbit, let's just say Gobbit doesn't have a head for business. Not my thing. Then she rests her finger on Wu. And then there's Gunshow. She, she wriggles it. The jury's still out on Mr. Gunshow. Meaning? Her response is direct, straightforward. Meaning there's a lot going on in that head of yours right now, and I'm not sure I can trust you. So I'm in charge because I'm the best of the worst? Oh, my sweet, don't put it that way. She opens her arms. You're the most equipped for the role. She's making sense. You're the right person, Grotto. I had a handle back in the Barrens. The handyman. Guess it's time to dust it off. Wu shakes his head, eyebrows, eyebrows raised. It's gonna be weird calling you the handyman again. So that time it fit the sentence. <laughs> haven't you called that since you were? Haven't called you that since you were kids. Gabba looks up uh, from Isabel to Wu to you. I guess this is our new crew. The rat on her shoulder scurries to the top of her head for a better view. Welcome to the shadows, the handyman. Well, well, it's probably a good, clean stopping point for the moment. So that cop's very dead, and Mr. Strangler seems to have repositioned himself. Luckily for him, they didn't choose to kill him. Oh, what's, what's this? Crew advancement available. As you lead your team through the shadows, your companions will continue to develop and learn new combat skills. Clicking the icons in the lower right-hand corner of the screen will, allow, will open the crew advancement menu. When this icon is highlighted, one or more of your companions is eligible to learn a new combat skill. At each advancement level, you may choose one of two possible combat skills for each of your runners. Choose wisely. Alright. I can pick a specific new skill. So, Gobbit? Is that just for... Can everyone get a new skill? Looks like it. Alright, I can go with the... Territor... Territoriality? Augmented skill, ranged combat. Gobbit spent some more time at the firing range, increasing her ranged combat skill and SMG specialization by one. Might not be big a deal, uh, that big of a deal since everyone else uses guns too. Spiritualist. Spirits will never break away from the first two rounds after you, after summoning them. Oh. Spirits will never break away in the first two rounds after summoning them. That's interesting. And there's multiple ranks along the way here. Oh, look down there. You can make haste better. One extra AP for four rounds. And increased accuracy. The idea of an increased uh, haste spell seems interesting. The fact that level one is blank back there makes me assume... I'm under the impression right now that this is like the StarCraft system of leveling up. StarCraft 2 during the campaign. I don't think it's going to make me stick to one tree and level up over and over again. I think, I think every time we get a new crew advancement, I pick one of the two skills and that's it. Let's see... So, but bonus to ranged combat or spirits never break away after summoning them for the first two rounds. Uh, I think, I think, yeah, let's focus on her, on her, spe her special abilities. We have enough gun people around. Isabel, Decker. Let's see, she has ranged combat plus one. Sabotage. 
Augment Gear Mini Launcher. Isabelle's grenade launcher can now fire remote mines, which can be triggered and detonated at a will. Interesting. Uh, gain program Tar Blaster for espionage. Isabelle gains the Tar Blaster 1.0 program, an upgraded version of the blaster that also sticks enemies in place for one round. That could also be handy, sticking someone in place. But the remote mine seems like it could be really useful too. Making someone still stick still for one round. Ah, uh, only, it's only particularly useful if I think they're not that I. Oh, I, you know, the tar launcher could be really useful for an incoming melee attacker that I want to freeze in place. So I, I think I, I like that idea. Let's select that one. And then for Duncan, we have lethal force. Uh, gain ability firepower round. Duncan gains an assault rifle ability that fires a single shot of incendiary ammo. It does an additional two damage and pierces up to two armor at the cost of one AP. So it's, it's just another special variant shot, probably probably worthwhile. Crowd control gets the underslung beanbag. What? Duncan gains a rifle ability that does two AP damage and imbalances targets, making them easier to hit on subsequent attacks. This ability cannot do critical damage. So you spend one... Ooh, I like that idea. Spend one AP to do two AP damage. I assume that means that you take away their two AP, which means they just don't get a turn, basically. You can use it every other turn, and it only uses one AP, so you can actually still do something that turn. That sounds like a really useful ability, actually. Alright, so confirm all. You want to confirm all these selections? Yes. That's all confirmed then. I chose the bottom one in all three cases. <laughs> that appears to be a trend. That's cool though. I feel like we could use a little I feel like we could use a little utility because my party seems to largely have offensive capabilities, but not a lot of uh special control situations. Alright, so thanks for watching guys like always. I think this is a good place to stop our was this episode five, I think. I'm definitely on board for this game. Although my voice is getting hoarse <laughs> from all the talking. A lot, these are long sessions. But I, I, I feel I'll probably stick to long episodes for the series because otherwise, not much will happen in a given episode. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Probably already said that. Probably already said that, too. I'm going now. <laughs>